Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. And if you're new, you might not know me. I'm Dustin. I'm the lead pastor here at Known Victory Church. It's an honor. I'm not sure with us today. And if you're new, yeah, that's me. I'm Dustin. I've been the lead pastor here uh, just over three years. And it's been an honor for my, my wife, uh, Beth, and I uh, to be our pastors. And last week, we started this new series that we called The Locked Door. And basically, it comes from the concept of when the disciples had locked themselves in the room because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders after Jesus had died, and they were trying to figure out what the future was going to look like. And so what they, they did is they locked themselves behind the door. And last week, we, we, I spoke through uh, that story and talking about fear and how fear is something that we've locked ourselves in, and we need to learn how to unlock the door and step out in faith and step out in courage. And I want to encourage you, if you missed it, go check it out. We have it on our YouTube page. But to, today, we're going to continue the series with another new message called Locked in Busyness. Locked in in busy, busyness, and this week I did some research and I did some math, and the, the average Canadian works about 40 hours a week, which is roughly eight hours a day. I know some of us in here, like, I don't know the last time I only worked eight hours in a day, right? But about average eight hours a day, then they say that the average person sleeps about seven hours per night, and you might be like, well, I don't even know the last time I slept less than, or more than seven hours in a night. You know, the average person, they say, spends three hours and 15 minutes on their phone every single day. Now, I know for some of us, that might be during work hours. I get that part. Uh, you just don't let your boss know, right? Like, you're like, I'm just scrolling on my Instagram for my, my 15th, 15-minute break of the day, right? Like, I know what it's like sometimes. It can be challenging. But the average person spends almost four hours a day watching television. Four hours per day. And the average person spends about one hour eating Per day, And so if you look at all this math, that gives us about 23 hours of our day is scheduled on average into these things. Work, sleep, eating, and entertainment. That's kind of how we spread uh, our time through. And the reality about this information is that we as humans are very busy. Like we are busy as human beings. We got a lot of things on the go. We have commitments at work. We have commitments to church. We have commitments to our family. We have commitments to our friends, to our favorite sports teams. We're busy. We have kids in after school programs. We have evening commitments to work or for pleasure. We have to go visit our family that might be in the hospital. We have to commute to work and wait in traffic. We have to change our kids' diapers and we have to clean their high chairs. We have to cook a meal that they ask for and then they realize they don't even want it. So what happened yesterday. Beth and Jane went to the store. Jane's like, I want to have sausages. So Beth bought sausages and we cooked them. And she's like, I don't want sausages. I never said that. And we're like, you did though. You know, like, you ever have a moment like that? Your kids ask for something and you cook it and they don't even want it. You're like, I just spent so much of my valuable time cooking you a meal you don't even want. And all you want to do is eat ice cream and candy. We got a lot on the go. And some of us, we should be getting sleep or getting less sleep than we should be getting. We have a lot going on. We as humanity are very busy. Busy with all the things that kind of pull at us and take us away and, and, and pull us to the different directions. And we're busy as people. One thing I want to share with you before I continue in the message is that being busy isn't necessarily wrong. Being busy isn't necessarily wrong. But I believe that busyness without rest can be very dangerous. I think for so many of us, we, we're, we've gotten so busy, it's a part of our schedule that we don't actually have time in our schedule to take moments to rest. And I don't just mean even individual moments, but, but family moments of rest. Maybe where the screens are turned off and you play an actual game with, with paper or dice or something, I don't know. 
Like, like when was the last time you took a day to rest with your family where you put out all the distractions, you didn't schedule any meetings, you didn't, you didn't fit all this stuff in, you said, today is a day that I'm gonna dedicate to, to rest with my family and rest in the presence of Jesus. And I believe that this, this is a truth that was spoken since the beginning of time. And we can see this in the book of Genesis. We have six days to be busy, six days to work, and it could, took God six days to create, right? So in Exodus, we're going to be here in, uh, in Exodus here, 20, verse 8 to 11. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day that, that of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household uh, may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Now, this is, is, you know, key when you come to Exodus and Moses and, and all of this. This is kind of one of the things that was a big kind of struggle throughout, you know, even Jesus' story. We preached about this a few weeks ago. But the importance of having moments of rest and in a place of God actually wanted it to be scheduled in our calendar for the seventh day. Like God was like, okay, I will work six days. I'll work six days. We'll take the seventh day to rest. But I think the truth is that over time that we've actually lost as a society the importance of spiritual rest and physical rest and mental rest. Because we live in this culture where we want everything to happen immediately. And we, we, we want to make sure that we get all our hours in. And life's expensive. And, and there, we got a lot that we have to figure out and think about and go through. We're busy as people. And I think the concern is, I think as a society, we've gotten so busy that we don't even really know how to rest anymore. We don't know what it's like to have moments where we aren't working or moments where we're, where we're sitting with our family or moments where we're spending time in intimate relationship with Jesus and, and having reading the scriptures and in prayer. We're so busy that we feel we don't have time to spend with our Savior. We're so busy. So I think a lot of us, we've locked ourselves in this place of busyness. Because I think for some of us, we think that the way that we please God is by how busy we are. By how much we can accomplish in a day. By how little sleep we can get or how little sick days we've taken over our career. You know, something that we're proud of is how much we work and how little we rest. And if I work really hard, I can give more. If I work really hard, God might forgive me for my past. If I work really hard, then I can start to build a stable income for my family. If I work really hard. And I think we have to get this idea out of our minds, right? Because in Ephesians 2, verse 8 says this, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. This is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So no one, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, salvation is not a reward for the good works we do. It's not a reward for how busy we are. It's a gift from God. We have to stop thinking that the, that the busier we are, the more God loves us. So the, the busier we are, the better we're gonna be for our family or the busier we are, the, the better people we're gonna be or the more money we're gonna have. We gotta understand that, that our hard work isn't always that pleasing to Jesus. Our hard work, sometimes if you remember the story of Mary and Martha and, and, and you know, that whole story of rest and, and work and Jesus like, yo, you got to spend time and rest in my presence. The work is important, but it's also important to spend time with me. See, we, were, we are his masterpiece created anew in Jesus so we can do all the good things he planned for us, but it starts with relationship with him. See, being busy doesn't equate to closeness with God. It doesn't even necessarily have eternal value. 
is busyness wrong? I think the answer is no. But I think we also have to be busy doing the right things. We have to be busy doing the right things. And this is, comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 33. And it's the heading is, do not be anxious. It says this, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink. Nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom and all its right, his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I think some of us, we've gotten a better job of adding anxiety into our calendar. Moments of stress and worry where that's just how we spend our time and we're, we're trying to figure out how it's all gonna look. We're trying to figure out what the future might look like. And we're like, I just gotta work hard today to make sure I can get to where I wanna be tomorrow. And in this, this Jesus is saying, seek first the kingdom. Seek first me. Seek first God and his righteousness. If we want to see our lives filled with the splendor of who Jesus is, it's not about how many hours we put in at work. It's about how much we can be filled by the Holy Spirit and by Jesus to go into the world with the strength that comes. We need to learn how to rest. And how do we learn how to rest? I think part of it is seeking first his kingdom and not being always so concerned about my kingdom and our kingdom. His kingdom. That's how we find rest. If he takes care of the birds, if he takes care of the grass, if he takes care of the lilies, why are we so concerned? And I'm not saying that this is an easy thing to live out. I'm not saying it's easy to, to live out a place where we have rest scheduled in our life. It's not always going to be easy. There's a lot we have to do. There's a lot going on. Rather than worry... We must seek first the kingdom of God and then all these things will be added to us. I think some of us are walking around filled with worry and filled with anxiety and we're seeking first our kingdom. And how many of us know when we're seeking first our kingdom, we notice when a lot of the things do not go as we had planned. When we're seeking first the kingdom, we're like, God, this is my five-year plan. This is where my business is going to be. This is where my career was going to be. This is where my education was going to be. And we're like, God, where are you? And he's like, seek first the kingdom. I'm not saying going to school is wrong. I'm not saying working hard is wrong because it's not. It's important. But do you have moments where you take to rest and seek first his kingdom and then bring his kingdom into the week with you wherever you go? It's important for us to learn how to rest. We're so caught up in how I can build my kingdom, build my church or build my family or build my bank account. How can I work harder? How can I work longer to try and get the promotion? I'll work every weekend if I have to. I'll do it to get what I want. So I guess if we want to learn how to rest, we have to sure first figure out what rest actually is. So I Googled it. And rest is defined as to cease work or movement in order to relax, <coughs> refresh oneself, or recover strength. If you want to learn how to rest, this is what it is. To cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. 
I think many of us have locked ourselves behind the door of busyness. Why? Because I think some of us were more comfortable at work than we are at the dinner table with our children. I think some of us, we were more comfortable in a business meeting than we are in a conversation with our teenage daughters. I don't have a teenage daughter yet, but I know it's going to be wild. So we're more comfortable getting up before our kids get up and just getting to, to work. We don't have to maybe have some of the interactions. And we're more comfortable when it comes to being busy than we are with resting. I know for some of us, the moment we sit down for the day, it's like, wow, I'm being lazy right now. I'm being so lazy. I, I, I took a Saturday where I didn't even do any yard work and I didn't even do my laundry and I didn't even do the dishes and, and I didn't take any calls. We're like, man, what a waste of a day. And what I think is, is fascinating is that, is that God created this day for us. God created rest for us. He didn't create it for himself. He created it for us. It says to keep it holy. Yet a lot of us were like, if, if I try and rest, if I take a day off, that is horrible. What is my boss going to think? What are people going to say if I'm resting when I should be working? We're like, God, I know you think it's important to rest, but like, I'll figure it out later. I'll rest later. I think we've believed this lie that busyness is a direct correlation to our productivity and results. That we believe the busier we are, that actually means the more valuable we are. That actually means the more uh, important we are. That means that the more we're going to accomplish, the busier we work. The more I work, the more I can get done, the more results I'll see, the busier I am, the more people will respect me. If I can work 50 to 70 hours a week, people will respect me, people will like me, I'll make my boss happy. If I don't take any sick days, I can prove how tough I am, I don't need to rest. Rest is for the weak, rest is for the lazy, rest isn't for me, it's for somebody else. What we're doing is we're taking something that God created as holy and saying I actually don't need it. I don't, I don't need it. That's for somebody else. That's for me when I get old. I'll rest when I'm old. Now, I also want to say there's, there is a problem in our culture sometimes today where we believe that rest is what we're supposed to do six days and only work one day. That's another conversation. Working is important. Rest is important. How do we rest? That's a good question, right? I think some of us, we don't even know. We don't even know what it looks like to rest. Like, I don't know. What, how do I rest? I'm so busy. I don't got time for it. I'll try and fit it in my schedule after my 2 o'clock meeting at Starbucks. I think this verse speaks of maybe a practical action step we can take. It's Philippians 4, verse 6. It says this, don't be worried about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. What if when we're trying to rest, rather than turning on Netflix, or when we're trying to rest with our family, rather than pulling out the Nintendo Switch and the iPad, what if we prayed as a family? What if we prayed for the needs of our, of our family together? Stop worrying about everything. We try, and, we try and kind of cope with our worry by watching TV or playing our games on our phone or getting busy with work. Like, I can't cope what's happening at home, so I'm just going to spend more time in the office. We try and cope. But this verse says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. If we want to see rest in our life, we need to realize that it's going to be tough to rest in a place of deep worry and deep anxiety where it's quiet. You know what's scary for a lot of us is quiet. You know, we're constantly having noise. So you sleep at night maybe with a, with, a, with a white noise machine and then you wake up and you're listening to music or you're listening to your kids scream and fight over a toy. And then if that's not it, there's music playing or the TV's playing. Or there's conversations going on. And whenever we get to a moment where there's, it's quiet, it scares us. And we try and fill that time 
with something else. I want to encourage you, even during the day, when there's moments that are quiet, spend time with Jesus. Pray about everything. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. We leave it up to him, our provider, our security, our savior. We, we place it in his hands. If we want to learn how to rest, stop worrying and start praying. If there's a challenge in your life when it comes to, to finances, yes, go to work, but also make your requests known to God. Lift him up and, and lift up your prayer and lift up your concern and lift it up to him because we leave our cares, we leave our concerns, we leave our problems in his hands. What does this do? It allows us to take the weight off of ourselves and learn to relax in his presence, not just by watching TV. Some of us, we relax by watching the news. Good luck. Some of us, we try and relax by watching sports. Good luck. After the, whatever happened yesterday in that Oilers game, it was crazy. Try and relax. They lost almost three times yesterday. That rest is not about an action we take at home of, I'm not going to work today. It's putting that aside and saying, God, how can my family worship you today? How can we pray today? How can we lift up all of our concerns and all of our problems and all of it to you today? And then we go into the week ready for the day where we've recovered strength, we've, we've gotten rest, we've relaxed a bit so we can go into the day with more energy than we went into the previous week. Have you ever noticed when you get to a day off, at least for me, that's when my body just crashes. Where I, I, like, like my body, I, I'm working so much and it's busy and, and I'm so tired that oftentimes it's my day off and I get sick. And it's my day off because why? Because my body's like, finally, finally. I think it's, un, it's time to unlock the door. See, busyness doesn't equate to success. Busyness doesn't always mean you're seeking first the kingdom of God. We gotta learn to rest with our family and learn to make space for the things in the kingdom. What are we busy with? Are we busy with the right things? What are you busy with? And there's parts of life that are gonna happen. We're gonna work. We're gonna have to sleep. We're gonna have to eat. There's stuff that's just a part of life, but what do you do in the outside time? I heard this pastor one time say, he said, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's easy sometimes to, you know, give the, you know, give your tithe, you know, give 10% of your money. But for some of us, it's really challenging to give him 10% of our time. For some of us, our time is more valuable than our money. So we say, God, I'll give you what I can, what I can afford. I'm not going to give you what I can't. I'm like, I can't give you my time. I don't got time for that. So I'll give a little more. If we were to give God, you know, 10%, of our time, it'd be about 2.4 hours a day. I would encourage you, maybe right now your time with God is 10 minutes or 35 seconds just before you eat supper. Can you schedule more time? Can you let go of something that's keeping you busy with the wrong things to allow more of God in your life, to allow Jesus in your life, to stop hiding behind the door of busyness saying, yeah, I got it figured out. I'm taking care of my family. I'm taking care of what's going on. But are you taking care of your spiritual self? Are you taking care of your soul? We gotta learn to make time for rest in our life. And I'm not talking about quitting your job, sitting at home playing Fortnite. That's all I'm talking about. I'm talking about the deep rest that only Jesus can bring. This peace and rest that is promised in Matthew, which is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I preach this, this uh, verse a lot because I think it's so important. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Then Jesus said, come to me. All you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. 
It's one of my favorite verses because for me, this is a verse that's, that's helped carry me through. And I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what your story is when it comes to busyness and rest. And He says, come to me. All you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and the promise is if we do that, he will give us rest. We need rest. It's supposed to be a part of our, of our story. It's supposed to be a part of our day. It's supposed to be a part of our week. Come to me. Not go to the TV, not go to your phone, not even go to church. Not go to school, not go to sports. Not go to the grocery store. He says, come to me. Leave all your cares, all your worries, all your anxiety, all your weariness, all your heavy burdens. Leave it at, at my feet and I will take it for you. I'll take it for you. We got to go to Jesus to find rest. It might not be easy to unlock the door. I get it. But I think it's, this is repeated so many times throughout Scripture. Don't be anxious. Do not be afraid. Look at the Christmas story. Do not be afraid. Throughout the Old Testament, do not be afraid. Be strong and courageous. So repeat it over and over and over. Why? Because I think it's so easy for us to be afraid. <laughs> so easy for us to hide our fear by becoming busy. We can't stay locked in busyness. Why? Because it will eventually leave us broken and exhausted. See, busyness isn't necessarily bad, but I think it has to carry two characteristics. Number one is if we're busy doing the right things. This means prioritizing the right things, putting God first in our lives. We seek first his kingdom, not our own. Now that we don't seek our kingdom, as well, it's not that we don't seek our kingdom, but it's to seek first his kingdom. Then it will be added. Some of us, were trying to seek first our kingdom. We're like, God, I'm not seeing the addition. All I'm seeing is the subtraction, what's going on. He's like, seek first the kingdom. Get busy doing the right thing things. You've got to put things in the rightful place. And the number two is we actively pursue rest. You know, this is something my family has been trying to do every single Friday. I, I have Fridays off. And since our girls aren't, aren't in school yet, our schedule is very flexible. And so we try and take Fridays off. And we do, we do our best to make sure all of our housework is done the day before, all the dishes, all of it, try and get it all done the day before. Because how many of us know when we're busy at work, when do we clean our house? When do we get the housework done? On the weekend. That's when we got the time. So we do our best to, to spend the time in the middle of the week making sure our house is ready for our Sabbath day, the day that we take off. We try our best not to schedule uh, meetings or, or schedule events. or We try our best to keep that day as, as sacred as possible. Because for me, in my life, you know, I, I leave for work normally before my kids come to go to bed or wake up. And then I'm usually getting home around 5.30 and my kids go to bed at 7. And so for me, I have, you know, during the week, sometimes an hour and a half um, every single day that I actually get to see my kids an hour and a half. And for me, I wish it was more, and I'm not in a season where that's the way it is, but that's why Friday is so valuable to me. It's not just that we take a day of rest for ourselves. We take a day of rest to teach our children that rest is important. And then we go to work and we teach our kids how important working hard is and, and how important it is to take care of the family. We've got to schedule time in our lives to be with one another. We do our best to be present with one another. We try our best to stay off our phones. It's, we're not perfect at this by any means. We struggle with this. I know how hard it can be. But it's a spiritual practice that we're trying our best to allow in our lives of taking a day of rest, finding rest for our family, to connect, to connect with Jesus. And our takeaway today is this, is the key that unlocks the door of busyness is the true rest that only Jesus brings. Right, if we wanna unlock the door, it's not gonna be easy necessarily. Some of us, we've been so busy for decades and 
we're thinking, I don't even know how this would work. <laughs> like with my schedule, I don't know how this is gonna fit in. I, I don't know. I think the key to unlock the door is the rest that only Jesus brings. And so let's unlock that door. Let's try and bring rest back into the picture. We gotta stop holding ourselves captive by being too busy to pray, by being too busy to read the scriptures, by being too busy to rest, because eventually it will catch up to you. Eventually you will no longer be able to manage the workload. Eventually it will happen. I've heard so many stories of pastors and business owners where you work hard. It's hard. Stories of these guys who wake up one day, they don't even know where they are, and they go into the, the doctor, like, yeah, you're, you're having severe panic attacks, and you got to figure out your schedule. I knew this pastor, there's a, he's a pastor of a multi, multi-site church, and, and he was preaching, you know, in two different cities every single Sunday. So he was speaking in Seattle and Los Angeles every single Sunday. He'd fly back and forth. He said one day he woke up the next day and he, he couldn't even remember what city he was in. and He didn't even know where he was. And he, and he went to the doctor like, yeah, you got you to gotta slow down. He, and he's like, but, but God's working. People are getting saved and people are getting baptized. And one of his mentors was like, yeah, but it's going to be a lot tougher if you're not around to see the fruit. It's going to be a lot tougher. We can't make it as long as we wish we could because we worked so hard and we didn't learn how to rest. It's important to rest. I know it's not easy for all of us when it comes to rest. I know it's not necessarily part of what we think. But I want to encourage you, let's create space every day, every week, every month, every year to take times of rest. So God, we thank you that you are, that, that we can bring our burdens to you. That we, when we are weary, when we are heavy burdened, we can bring our worries, we can bring it to you, lay it at your feet, and you promise to give us rest. So God, as a church today, we say, God, we need your rest. God, help us learn how to schedule it in our schedule. Help us learn how to rest properly and not just rest by watching TV, but resting in your presence and Let us bring our burdens to you. God, help us unlock the door of busyness. Help us take a step of faith out into the beauty of who you are. Jesus, we love you. Give us the strength and courage we need. In Jesus' name, amen.